what we got today. So today, oh shoot, I should have brought all three books up. I didn't. You want to a them? trilogy? It's a trilogy that was written called oh, the, the Singer. So it's yeah, the Singer by Calvin Miller, mm -hmm. and he wrote a trilogy, the Singer. And I can't tell you what the other, the, but this is the gospel. Then he does a second one that's the book of Acts. Then he does the third one, which is Revelation. Mm. Very interesting. Huh. So uh, it's kind of along the lines of uh, Narnia, mm. the Narnia books. Yeah. Then, uh, Tolkien, what did Tolkien write? Oh, Hobbits, the Lord of the Rings. That, that Lord series. of the Rings. So it's in that frame of mind. So some people reject this book. Yeah. Because he's doing the Gospels in a very unique way. A we need some unique we way. need some spin because when you when it, you oh, I was listening to somebody talking about the brain and how when something's familiar, when you've seen it over and over, your your brain actually just says, OK, you already know that and it doesn't pay attention to it anymore. So we need it to be uh, addressed or, or presented to us in different ways to just capture us again. Well, see, I started rereading it last night. Mm. And I have come to the conclusion you're going to faint, but I'm going to have to read all the way through it because there's no way I can explain the language is uniquely to this book. And so I will have to read it in sections. Okay. When should I faint? Well, that was the fainting that I'm going to read through the. I know. Have to read should I do it now or later? Uh, no, if you faint now, you're so tired, you may not get back up. So don't do it now. Wait till this is over with, then okay. collapse. I'll put my faint on pause. <laughs> okay, pause. <laughs> see, can you see that? You saw the little pictures. The pictures are very different also. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so the cool thing you have, to, several things you have to know. Of course, the book's going to tell you. But mm -hmm. Jesus, this is Jesus when he's, it's not going to be like the biblical story. That's fine. So that's fine. somebody's watching this and that's going to put you in a twirlwind, then you probably. It's an allegory, right? Yes, is it? it is an allegory. Yes, it go. is. See, here's the deal. I, I studied English in college. I have an English minor. I love literature. I love music. And so I'm going to get into something like this. So yeah, anyway. I love allegories. Go for and it. And he has, and at the beginning of every chapter, he has these little challenging little things to say that sometimes some of them I never have understood. But he's challenging you for whatever's coming. Read that so one Jesus, you just showed us. What's that little challenge you just showed us? <laughs> it's just this. It's going to throw some. For most who live, hell is never knowing who they are. The singer, and by the way, the singer is Jesus. He's mm. the troubadour. He's the singer. The singer knew and knowing was his torment. Oh. He knew he was going wow. to the court. Wow. Most, for most who live, hell is never knowing who they are. Wow. The singer knew and knowing was his torment. Mm. Okay, I'm already peaked. Good. Okay, he doesn't come as a little baby. We get him when he's already a man. Okay. When he woke, the song was there. Its melody beckoned and begged him to sing it. It hung upon the wind and settled in the meadows where he walked. He knew its lovely words and could have sung it all 
but feared to sing a song whose harmony was far too perfect for a human ear mm. to understand. Mm. And still at midnight, it stirred him to awareness. And with its haunting melody, it drew him with a curious mystery to stand before an open window. In Rhapsody, it played among the stars. It rippled through Androme Andromeda. These, that's a constellation. It rippled through. See, it's nighttime. He's looking up at the mm -hmm. stars. It ripped the music rippling through Andromeda and deepened Vega's hues. And Vega is a blue looking star. So it deepened her colors. It swirled in heavy strains from galaxy to galaxy and gave him back his very fingerprint. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I, he created, so I don't know. Yeah. Sing the song, the heavens seem to cry. We never could have been without the melody that you alone can sing. Mm -hmm. So the galaxies already heard the song and they love it. Mm. But he drew back, sighing that the song they so desired was higher than the earth. Mm. And always in his agony of longing and reluctance, the atmosphere around him argued back. You too are higher than the earth. You sang the higher music once before the oceans ever crashed their craggy coasts. He braced himself upon a precipice above the canon, canyon floor, and with the wind full on his face, he cried into the sky, Earthmaker, tell me if I have the right to sing. Earthmaker is God. But then his final word trailed off into gales. The gull scream. No, he thought only Earthmaker is everlasting. He alone must be the theme from which sprung the world I stand upon. And so he only loved but never sang the song. Full well he knew that few would ever see him as a singer of so grand a piece. Mm. He knew that they would say to him, you are no singer. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we are. Mm -hmm. And even if you are, you should sing the songs we know. Mm -hmm. And well, he knew the penalty of law. A dreamer could be ostracized in hate for singing songs the world has never heard. Mm -hmm. Such songs have sent a thousand singers to their death already. And the I think he's talking about the prophets there. And the song which dogged his aching steps and begged him pleadingly to sing, it was completely unfamiliar. Only the stars and mountains knew it, but they were old. And man was new and chained to simple, use, useless rhymes. And thus he could not understand the majesty that settled down upon him. But daily now it played upon his heart and swept his soul until the joy exploded his awareness, crying near the edge of sanity, sing, sing, sing. That's the first chapter. That's the first chapter. Yes. Do you want to stop there and comment on no, it? Or you want no. to keep okay. Unless you do. Keep we, do. we need to keep remember. For most who live, hell is never knowing who they are. Mm. The singer knew and knowing was his torment. Now we start to number two. Okay. It's strange how oftentimes the air speaks. We are this these introductions just take your stretch. <laughs> we are sane as long as we hear voices when there are none. We are insane when we hear nothing. 
and worse when we are deaf. Mm. Mm. Wow. He worked the wood and drove the pegs methodically. The shavings from the file piled high upon the floor. Earthmaker, full of mercy, he said, when evening had come, I am a tradesman. This is Jesus the carpenter. I like it. No, said the silent heir. Not a tradesman, a troubadour instead. A tradesman, he said firmly as he smashed his mallet on the vice. A troubadour. The silence thundered back. Mm. That's it. That's chapter two? Yep. <laughs> what was our little thought? Oh, that's uh, strange how oftentimes the air speaks. We are sane as long as we hear voices when there are none. We are insane when we hear nothing. And worse, and worse, we are deaf. We are insane when we hear nothing, and worse, we are deaf. Stretch, get ready, stretch, stretch, stretch. <laughs> Two artists met one time within a little wood, and each wood, like the woods, mm -hmm. each brought its finest painting stroke by his complete uniqueness. When each revealed his can canvas to the other they were identical so once in every solar system there are two fingerprints alike but only once hmm. yeah. is seeming madness yeah, this is going to be a harder one here. Was that the end of chapter three? No, wait, that's just, that was the beginning. He always says this little. Oh, that was between the, the, the eye stuff. Okay. Now this is chapter three. His okay. seeming madness made the music play a hundred times more loudly than before. It lured him from his highland home. He left the mallet broken on the vice and walked away. Never had he been the way he walked, and yet his feet knew every step. He could not cease to marvel how they moved his body forward through the mist of circumstances which he vaguely knew by name. His naked feet intrigued him, for they moved with purpose which his mind had not yet measured. Besides, they each one wore a, this is interesting, his feet. Besides, they each one wore a curious scar of some wound yet unopened. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yet they had been there long before his birth. Hmm. What twist of meaning had Earthmaker given him to scar his feet before he ever walked? Mm. Earthmaker's God. From the hills he walked ever downward to the valley miles below. Down, down, down until the vegetation thickened into shrubs and the desert gave way to river jungles. And there where water lapped at his fatigue, he heard a singer singing his compelling carols to the empty air. The tradesman knew that it was just an earth song, for it was different from the star song which begged him be its singer. And some yet somehow liked it hmm. the river singer finished and they walked into the trees the river singer is john the baptist hmm. so he's singing us 
a song. It's an earth song, but it's a good song. The rivers sing her in. So they're walking into the trees. Are you the troubadour who knows the ancient star song? The tradesman softly asked. No, you are the great troubadour for whom the songless world so long has waited, the river singer said. Sing, for many years now I have hungered to hear the ancient star song. Mm. But I'm a, I, I'm a tradesman only. And then the river singer waded out into the water and beckoned with his hand. Mm. Slowly the tradesman followed. They stepped waist deep in water. Their eyes swam and they waited for the music to begin. Mm. It did. Tradesman knew the river singer heard it too. Water swirled around them and the music surged and every chord seemed to fuse the world into oneness. Mm. And they stood until the surging current buried them in song. Mm. It then receded and the music died away. And the river was once more a simple river. Then over that thin silver stream, the thunder pealed and a voice called from the sky above. Tradesman, you are the troubadour. Now go and sing. Mm. Wow. Let's pause there. Everyone? Yeah, let's pause there because that's a lot. It's a lot. It's the first time I've heard it. And I'm like, okay, wait, what have we just heard? <laughs> but I, I love that this is portraying the gospel as a song, as a melody. Yes. That's, yes. A, that's a beautiful way to look at it. Yeah. So say more about these these few chapters. Well, it's kind of it's fascinating to me. I, I personally believe Jesus knew who he was from the beginning. This is kind of acting like he didn't, but I right. do believe he knew that. But at his baptism with John the Baptist is when he entered his ministry work. And so uh, I think Jesus was 100% human. So I think he did struggle with things just like we do. And I, I just think this is cool the way he's getting used to his assignment. Mm -hmm. Don't we all do that? <laughs> In life. Right. I mean, I don't know how it would be for him. Like, yes, he was all knowing. And yet, did he limit his knowledge so that he could fully experience the human experience? Of... I think he limited his knowledge to his his God qualities to a certain extent when he was on this earth. You remember he said nobody knows when he's coming back again except the father. Right. You remember he told the disciples that, but then I think when he went to heaven, now he knows when he's coming back, but that was when he was limited in a human body. Yeah. And so we know when he was young and, and they, they got separated from him for a couple of days. Um, he knew he was about his father's business. He did know what that 12 years, he was 12 years old. I think 12 mm -hmm. years old. That's what we're, we've been told. He knew he was about his father's business, but I think, I mean, it was speculation, but it, he had to kind of grow into the knowledge of all of that. And I wonder how much of Mary had to do with him understanding because she had to tell him the story of his conception and his entry into the world. Right. Right. And, um, wow. I mean, yeah, it's, I love seeing it as a song, though. 
Okay, I want to go back to that part where the the two paint, painters brought their drawings into the woods. Talk about that piece. This only happens in, like, what did you say? In, once. Once. Let me, let me get there. <laughs> two artists met one time within a little wood. Each brought his finest painting stroked by his complete uniqueness. And when each revealed his canvas to the other, they were identical. Hmm. So once in every solar system, there are two fingerprints alike, but only once. I'm not sure. I, I totally understand what he's saying here. It, it, it feels like He's talking about the Imago Dei, the thumbprint of God. I don't know. I, I don't either. I don't know if, if he's saying, I don't know if these two artists are John the Baptist and Jesus, and they uh, each had a role in the gospel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, that's interesting. Once in every solar system, there are two fingerprints alike. <laughs> yeah. That doesn't get explained somewhere down the road? No, no. He never explains this stuff. It drives me crazy. <laughs> but each one of them goes with the chapter you're reading. I can tell you that. Each one of them goes with the chapter you're reading. So in that chapter, he's talking about Jesus and John the Baptist. I, I don't know. Huh. Okay. So maybe that was it. They're they're the two that are alike. They they had they had an assignment to do. Right. And even though their assignments were different, they became as one. Hmm. Under the power of God, I guess. I don't know. Huh. This guy has died now, so we can't ask him. Oh, ask that's him. not fair. I'll ask him in heaven. I'll ask him in heaven. So. Well, shoot. He became a, a professor at... Um, Can you slide a note? Can you Sanford. slide a note under the door? <laughs> under the pearly it's, gates that might just float down heaven. to me? No, I don't think I can do that. I <laughs> wish I could, but I got plenty of notes for my mama. I'd like to slide under the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. They were each a part of the assignment, you know. Uh -huh. John was preparing the way for the Messiah. I, I, that's, a, that's a puzzle. Who a lot of these... Who a lot of these are puzzles. A lot of his little challenges at the beginning are really right. Well, hell has never known who you are. That's very profound. Yes, I would say hell yes to that. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, it's uh... because we are created in the image of God. We've lost that identity. We've we haven't lost that in Mago Day, but we have lost our understanding of it and our embrace right. embracing of it. That has been marred. We have been marred. It's like right. the painting has gotten disfigured. Hmm. I really like that statement. Um uh, okay. Anything else you wanna? anything that, that I, just, I just love the way this guy yeah well this is the beauty of the imagination i use the imagination a lot in my coaching with clients and it's not something that we're accustomed to. we use our imagination all the time we don't realize we're doing it but when we actively seek to use our imagination adults kind of shut down like this is this is difficult i don't know how to do that Yes, you do. Like I, I had a group of people I was trying to do that with. And they said, oh, we, we're not good at using our match. I says, oh, you know, you use it all the time. So let me just show you. Let me just show you how you're wrong. I'm like. 
okay, don't visualize any of the things I'm about to say. Like huh. red balloon. <laughs> you can't do that. Sailboat. You can't do that. Cat. <laughs> No, okay, you know, so I mean, I, you, you can just go on and on. I mean, immediately you see that in your head. Your imagination is very active, right? But it's it's a tool that we have to use, and he's using it, I think, in a in a in a very beautiful way to give another um, a reef, let's see, a fresh look at the gospel. That's true. I do believe that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that is a liberty that we have as believers, and it doesn't supplant the word of God, but it's it's a beautiful thing to use your imagination. Right? All the stories that we read in the Bible, all of the uh, the Bible stories, we have to imagine. What did David look like when he put the stone in the sling? What did the giant look right. like? We have to imagine. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. So there you go. There's my two cents. Yep. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> and a good two cents worth, I would say. <laughs> okay.